Choosing a game engine is easy, but if you're just starting out or aren't sure which engine is best suited for your needs, it can feel pretty overwhelming as you may be stuck with your choice for several months. But not to worry because I've made a list of what engines are best suited for different kind of projects, taking into account ease of use, community size, and platform requirements. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what engine to start your project on. The best way to find the right engine is to try a few and see which one resonates with you the most. What I might like about Unity, you might hate, but it is important to pay attention to what features the engine supports, its pricing, and its programming language. If you don't know how to code, you absolutely should, or you should find someone who does know and add them to your team because it'll really help you out in the long run. But if you're insistent on not coding because you're lazy and no, don't come at me with excuses, you can do it. I know you can. There are some options called visual scripting, basically coding without actually coding. And the best engine for this is Unreal Engine. I know someone who made this entire game just using their blueprint system. Here are some other options you can use as well. But even with visual scripting, you'll need to learn how it works. And that's where the most important factor comes in when choosing a game engine, its community. The more community there is, the more tutorials and help you could potentially get when you run into an issue. And trust me, you will run into an issue. <laughs> Being frustrated when you can't find the answer to simple questions can easily derail your progress and take a hit on your motivation. There is a reason why 90% of indie developers don't finish their games. These are currently the biggest players in the market, Unreal, Unity, and Godot. Game Maker is also another popular option. It's important you understand that each engine has its pros, its cons, and its learning curve. Don't expect to make an open world RPG MMO in your first week while never having opened an engine before. Unity has the most resources hands down, followed by Unreal and Godot. This is because Unreal and Unity have been in the game for a really long time, but Godot's resources have been exponentially increasing over the last year. Now, the second most important thing you wanna consider when choosing a game engine is what kind of game you wanna make with it. Sometimes one engine is better suited for 2D, 3D, multiplayer. Choosing one which doesn't have those features built in can just prolong your development time as you'll need to code those features yourself. So I've made a little chart to help you visualize. <laughs> if you want to make a 2D game, Unity hands down has the most features for 2D and you can fight me about this. <laughs> From tile maps to sprite editors to skeletal animation, physics. It also has one of the best asset stores, so there's a 99% chance that someone already made the system or the prop that you're trying to create, so it's easier to just purchase it and save time. However, there is some controversy, of course, surrounding Unity, which may dissuade you from choosing it, which I'll discuss in a few moments. This is then followed by Godot, which also has great 2D support. With tile maps, collisions, it's extremely fast to open and run. It has an easy to understand programming language similar to Python, pretty good documentation, and most importantly, the code is open source, so anyone in the community can contribute to the development of the engine. And lastly, Game Maker is made for 2D games. It's compact, it's quick to learn, and it's really fast to prototype. It's what I'm using to make my precision platformer called Boombi, which you should totally wishlist. I'm not asking. <laughs> However, none of these engines are perfect, and each of them have their caveats, so it's important to keep these in mind when choosing them but I'll mention that in a moment. So what about 3D games or those open world MMORPG locos? <laughs> well, this big fish blows away the competition on Real Engine 5. It's made for 3D and has a ton of built-in features like a first person and a third person controller to help get you started. Their visual coding system called Blueprints is the best in the market and it's great for larger teams with a mix of programmers and artists. You can also download the source code and make any changes as needed per your project requirements. They give out a lot of freebies like mega scans, free monthly assets and they even have a mega grant program to help fund your game if you get accepted they also have great performance insight tools to help optimize your games which a lot of beginners never worry about until they end up playing their game and realize it only runs at 10 fps so optimize your games folks unreal is great to learn if you want to get a job in the game industry and learning c in general is really good in that regard this is followed by unity which has several different rendering pipelines depending on the graphical needs of the project and godot which has been vastly increasing its 3d support but still nowhere near unity and unreal's level now to be more specific if you're making a multiplayer game unreal followed by unity is the best bet unreal has multiplayer built in and the company's experience with fortnite has trickled down to the development of Unreal Engine 5, while Unity recently introduced a new multiplayer package called Netcode, which is great and I have a huge tutorial on. And they have Unity Gaming Services, which are extra options to help host servers and manage players. If you're making an open world 3D game, Unreal hands down. Optimization is built into the engine 
as it breaks down a large map into smaller chunks and only shows the player what they need. If you're making a physics-based game, Unity has a lot of built-in functions for this for both 2D and 3D. Unreal also has great 3D physics, but Godot's built-in physics engine still doesn't have as much features as the other two. Fellow developer Pontypans tried to start his physics-based climbing game in Godot, but ended up switching to Unity because there were just so many more components that were an easy plug and play. However, there is a popular physics package for Godot called Jolt, and I believe they're now integrating this as the main physics engine. So hopefully that will make it much better. If you're making any sort of really complicated math equations or just handling a lot of objects or AI, and I mean a lot, then you'd want to go with Unity, which has support for dots, the entity component system, and the job system. And if you don't know what any of that means, then you don't need to worry about it. My friend Johnny has a lot of tutorials on it if you're interested in learning. I want to emphasize that your first project should not be a multiplayer game or an open world game for that matter, you should start small and just learn the basics before diving head in. Now let's take a closer look at Unreal. Unreal has always been popular and has gained even more popularity with Unreal Engine 5. It's always been a go-to choice for AAA games with big graphics requirements. It's free to use under 1 million in revenue, but over you'll have to pay a 5% royalty of your revenue for your game. They've also recently introduced a new subscription per person working on the project that only applies to non-game developers like filmmakers, and that's only once you've reached the $1 million threshold. So you'll probably not need to worry about it if you're just making games. But it's not all sunshine and roses. As with the pros, there are the cons. There is a large learning curve with Unreal. You'll have to spend some time getting used to it and navigating the million menus and buttons. You'll also need a beefy computer to even run it, and it takes a lot of space on your hard drive. There's usually a heavy reliance on blueprints because their C++ is just not fun. Their documentation is mostly on the side of lacking. And if you're changing the source code of the engine, be prepared to wait because it takes forever. Overall, Unreal is a very solid engine with a lot of great features, but you'll need a lot of patience and resilience to work with it and not give up. Now let's step into Unity's terrain a bit. Unity has always been the go-to choice for indie developers for a reason. However, in the recent years, there has been a growing dissatisfaction with them as they haven't been working on features that game developers have been asking for for years. And they recently pulled a runtime fee mess where thousands of developers just stopped using Unity altogether after they tried to unfairly change their pricing. And I do have a whole video explaining what happened if you're interested. But they've since reverted a lot of those policies, even changing their CEO. And Unity still kept the notorious runtime fee, although a little different. A lot of developers ended up switching to Godot because of this, because of its open source nature. But I personally see Unity showing promise after their recent changes, and I still think it's a great engine to start learning game development with, as I once did. Unity has the most confusing pricing out of all the engines. It's free until you make 200k on your game in the year. From then on, you need to purchase the Pro subscription, which is $2,040 a year per seat. And once you reach the $1 million a year threshold, you'll also start needing to pay the runtime fee, which depends on the number of engagements the game receives. Wait, let me read this. Engagement is defined by the time a user successfully acquires, downloads, or engages with your game for the first time. Luckily, there's a max 2.5% revenue cut of your game, so you won't have to worry about it going over. Objectively speaking, 2.5% isn't bad once you reach that threshold. However, it just gets confusing with the pro plan pricing and it's a little convoluted. Apart from the runtime fee, they also tend to not update some packages for some time. And over the last few years, they focused on AI, VR, blockchain, instead of focusing on more game related features for the engine. It's also pretty slow at opening projects and compiling, but I do recommend this asset to help speed up your workflow. It also gets confusing with their different graphics pipeline, URP versus HDRP versus built-in. And you have to choose one to start and make sure you choose the right one for your project because changing later on could spell disaster. In most cases, you start with URP and HDRP is used for more graphically advanced games. There's also no way to get the source code for the engine unless you're an enterprise and you're paying big money. However, I've never had a use to get the source code. Unity is built to be flexible to allow developers to build their own tools on top of it. With Unity, you'll have a love-hate relationship. Some things will bug you, but you'll end up coming back to it because it's just the most flexible thing to get your project done in. Godot, an underdog that quickly rose the ranks after Unity's mess 
messy situation. Godot's open source nature has made it one of the most popular engines of the year. It's free to use and exports to multiple platforms. However, for consoles, it gets a bit trickier. There's a free Switch port from RAR Lab Games. I can't believe I said that. But for Xbox and PlayStation, you'll probably need to handle an external team to handle the porting for you. There's one called W4 Games, which is made by some of the creators of Godot themselves, where its prices depend on team size and the number of platforms you want to deploy to. As Godot is still a recent riser, some features aren't as fleshed out as in Unity or Unreal. There's not as much extensive 3D support as the other two options. The built-in physics engine has been said to be mid, and there's no good asset store yet and not as much assets. The reason Godot threw me off at the time was because there was no way to preview the scene while also playing the game which for me, I use that all the time to help debug. But recently, Phantom Camera was released and it does let you make a handy 3D camera preview while playing the game. Game Maker has been an OG engine for a lot of developers and has kept pretty high popularity over the years. Did you wishlist my game yet? What I like about it is how interconnected it feels and how easy it is to get something up and running. The pricing is pretty nice, it's free to use, and only a one-time fee for commercial projects. If you want to publish to consoles though, there'll be a recurring fee for that, but you shouldn't be publishing to consoles unless you can be sure that you can pay that fee. However, if you want to make 3D games, it's probably better to look elsewhere. There's not much 3D support in the engine. The community is smaller than others, and there's no built-in UI editor yet. They are working on it, I've heard, but it's kind of annoying to code all the UI yourself, but I do recommend this asset, GM Live, which helps you iterate much faster. You also need to compile or run the projects to see any errors in your code, whereas others tell you straight up if something won't compile, and you'll need to code some features manually where other engines already have them built in. For example, I use Raycast a lot to detect collisions, and they're not built in. It's basically like poking this wall and being like, is there something here? Oh yeah, that's a wall. However, I just found a free package for it and more often than not, there'll be a package someone made that you can just take or pay. Not take, pay. I, I meant if it was free. I did find the marketplace a little slow and outdated. A lot of assets are actually on itch.io. And unfortunately, I don't think as many AAA companies or studios use Game Maker, so the skills you learn with it aren't as transferable to industry as maybe Unreal or Unity. Still feeling lost on what engine to choose? Remember to choose the engine that fits what kind of games you want to make, its pricing, and if its values align with yours. And you can't forget its export options. So what platforms can you export to? And I made a helpful diagram which I'll show in a bit with all the engines so you can see exactly what exports to what. My recommendation is to just try a few engines and see what clicks for you. You can just watch a small tutorial for some of them or even make a same small game in each of the engines and then compare them. There's really no wrong answer here, just choose one. Now I do wanna mention some other options if you do feel like straying the path. As I showed in the start, GD Develop is an open source visual coding engine that excels at making 2D games easily. They do have some pricing tiers if you want to export your game to other platforms though, but it comes along with some other neat features. Construct is also a popular visual scripting solution to make 2D games, but you can also use JavaScript, which is easy to learn to code. Although this one does have a higher price tag straight from the start, but there is a free trial. Phaser IO is also a 2D engine that uses JavaScript and it's completely free. Coco's 2DX is another 2D solution. It's completely free, open source, and supports both JavaScript and TypeScript. Stride is a really Really nice open source 2D and mostly 3D engine that uses C Sharp, and I've heard pretty good things about this one. Pygame is a Python library, which is open source and is mostly for 2D. I did try this one for a bit, and it does have a sort of from scratch feeling without needing to know all the complicated maths for rendering graphics. Monogame is an open source framework using C Sharp and is fully cross platform. Celeste was made using it. A lot of programmers prefer these lightweight solutions where you have to code a lot of the features yourself. It may sound counterintuitive, but the more code is yours, the more control you have over it. And when something goes wrong, more often than not, you'll know exactly where it goes wrong and you can change it yourself. It's like building a PC versus just buying one from the store. When something goes wrong, you'll usually know what to change. But in my case, when something goes wrong, I'm like, uncle, who's an IT? please help me. <laughs> it's important to make sure the engine you choose supports the platforms you want to publish to. So here's a nice diagram that shows each engine and its export options. Patrons and YouTube members can also access the PDF I made for this video where it's easier to see all the information. If this does seem overwhelming, the answer to choosing the right engine is actually really easy. 
and it's that there is no answer. I can't tell you what engine you should choose. That's up to you. Just try a few and start learning. You may be surprised that your favorite engine might not be my favorite engine or everyone else's favorite engine. I know you're watching this video because you want someone to make a decision for you, but you'll have to stand up for yourself. I'm giving you information. Now it's up to you to decide what to do with it. Analysis paralysis won't help you finish your game anytime soon, but if you are looking for some inspiration, here are my first impressions when I made a game with both Godot and GameMaker. I also have a ton of great Unity tutorials in the description.